You, you know how I started going to prison, bro? It was a man by the name of Billy Jackson. They had the Scared Straight program, right? So we're in Eastlake Juvenile Hall. So these dudes come in, a mask and a white boy and this black dude. And they came in, had the, the blue coats on and their jeans, looking tough with the afros. And they's like, man, you look, we right here. I started off right here, East Lake Juvenile Hall, right where you are. I went to camp, then I went to Y. Now I'm doing life in San Quentin. You couldn't make it in San Quentin. You'd be watching somebody draw and somebody f you in And we were scared. Ooh. Then I started thinking, like, I'm tough. So I went to camp. <laughs> I went to Y.A. and came to San Quentin, right? When I got to San Quentin, I said, man, you anybody know Billy Jackson? He's like, yeah, man, Billy just came back here on the... I said, well, where's Billy Jackson? I'm going to the lower yard one day with my homies. I said, Billy Jackson, you remember me? He like, nah, bro. Where? I said, you remember East Lake Juvenile Hall? He like, yeah, man. I said, you remember you told everybody that we couldn't make it in prison, that somebody would fuck us in our ass, and we'd be. I just came here to find out who fucked you in your ass. Oh wow. <laughs> oh man. Well, no, man. You know they. Everybody ain't scared of that shit. Some kids take it as a challenge. Oh, you couldn't be no crip. We too hard. Oh, you couldn't be no pyro. You, nigga, you could be all of that. What does it take? <laughs> Stand there and look stupid. <laughs> so we can misinform you that, oh man, you know, we, we just thought we was helping. You can't help me trying to threaten me, you know? So that's the 70s, you know, that's how they were illustrating. And I was in youth authority, I knew most of the original Crips that came through, there wasn't no gang of Pyrus or Bloods in, in Youth Authority. You know what I'm saying? They had uh, 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 Kevin Williams, Crazy Crip. They had uh, uh, Stanley Watkins, Chipper from uh, Avenues, Scooter from Avenues, um, Minnesota, West Side Crip. Had Anthony Jackson, had Gr a Bunchy Griffin. All of these dudes was originals. And we had to deal with them every day. You know what I'm saying? And your car, it's, it was generally, when, we, when I, we was banging, it's 10 to 15 crips to every one blood, to every one pyro. So you had to be up, you had to sleep in shifts because you're going to fight somebody every day because they didn't believe in head ups. Yeah. That's why the name came, Kai was running packs. Because they don't believe in no head ups. No, the hell with that. We five of us gonna pack you out, but you ain't gonna do it to us. So those are the things that we, we went through. So for a person to come, a foreigner, to come on our turf and to get to rattling about people that he held homage to, now he's on a platform and you're saying, fuck Nipsey, fuck uh, Monster Cody. If it didn't for, for the book of Monster Cody, you wouldn't even know what a crip was. Some white woman felt that you was pretending to be a crib. She gave you a, a book of a real crib and you read it with your one eye and got some information and took it and ran with it like you've been doing this all your life. He hooked up with Mob James and then him and Mob gets into it and he tells Mob James, uh, fuck him. But then he turns around and says, fuck Montreal. You, don't, you never met that man. You don't know how we feel about him. And we all feel some way about it. But me and Melvin is the only one that took action and go there and get with it. And you ran out the room. Like, nigga, be real with you. We, we too old to beat you up. Not too old, but it could happen, you know. So he gets on a platform the next day talking about some old men came out there trying to check him and that we homeless. Nigga, you don't do your research. I'm a homeowner, been a homeowner most of my, I ain't never lived in an apartment. Been successful, got a job, deal with Black Unicorn Factory. I'm, I'm, I deal with IPO startups. I got a legitimate, but my structure is Piru. It's a city, we citizens of the city of Compton, California. I call it Bompton, California. As Melvin said, not set tripping, set trending. 
first black community west of the Mississippis. Nobody else. Compton, California. So I'm proud to be from Compton. I'm with it. You know what I'm saying? And anything anybody say about that 10 square miles, I got a clap back for it. Everybody hears when you you see your water and you have your bottle of water and you see artesian wells and they show you all in mountains. The first 21 artesian wells is out of Compton, California. So y'all drinking Compton water. <laughs> yeah, OK. You know what? Well, uh... Yeah, how'd you guys get the call to go over there? You guys just, you know, you thought it was a good opportunity to confront him about the things he's yeah, we, I did, Like I said, it had been like since August or September that this happened, and I've been trying to get it. So we was invited by uh, 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 E from uh, Boss Talk, who is, is supposed to be a friend of dudes, and he said the dude that, uh, uh, said he would do the interview with us. So we came up there to do the interview, and... Uh, we had a, a, didn't set up a, a proper platform, so but we allowed him. And so once he was allowed to do his talk, he, he spouted off and said what he wanted to say. And nobody even raised, didn't say, didn't interrupt him at all about talking about characters and he don't respect characters and he don't do this and what he don't respect and he, what they mama called them. And you don't know them people. So once he start, he finally shut up and he asked Melvin and Melvin started, he started interrupting. Like, oh man, I, bro, you know, but that was his plan to hit and run. But we in your city, we in your city. So that's it, you know, but I just wanted to set the record straight that he's a liar and he's a coward. He's... He's a, 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 he's not even a makeup crip. He's a, a really a, a out of sort agent, you know. He's part of, he's part of the gang police, you know. Uh, I say uh, um, uh, Rick Ross is the hip hop police, and he the gang police. <laughs> to just I just gotta set the record straight. You know, whatever it is, it ain't no hard. I mean, yes, yeah, hard feelings. You know what I'm saying? But uh, understand, men should be able to respectfully disagree. And whatever your platform is, you still got to respect mine. And and uh, when people say people say respect is so loosely, I you just don't respect me. Uh, just out. Of, I don't care whether if you disrespect me, I'm gonna kill you. But if I think I can get away with it, if I start touching you on your, your knee, then touch you, next thing I do, I'll slap you in the mouth. Uh. You let somebody get away with touching you, yeah. Yeah. So you, it, in prison, if you touch on me, you must be trying to suck my dick or something. So get back. <laughs> Men don't touch men. Yeah, okay. You feel what I'm saying? So we have to deal with the respect of mutual, like, man, killer knows another killer. And nobody want a hard job, huh? So shit, let's go on and get somebody weak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that that's that's the dynamics of life.